This is an introductory tutorial to Hariba Scientific's LabVIEW offerings. LabVIEW is a graphical programming platform that allows users to incorporate many different types of equipment into a cohesive software package. It allows for instrument control and data acquisition, but also offers users the capability to carry out post-processing of data as well. It is an ideal tool for automating measurements and customizing specialized experiments. Currently, Hariba offers package LabVIEW libraries that may be used to build custom software by the end user. Every instrument control that would be required to carry out an experiment is incorporated into these libraries. For example, initialization of the hardware, motor control, and data acquisition. A brief overview of the base level VIs will be presented to familiarize the user with Hariba's offerings. In addition, demo VIs packaged with each set of libraries will be executed to demonstrate a starting point to developing new code. Finally, an example of code developed for a transmission measurement will be presented. This table summarizes all of the LabVIEW libraries that are available. For each operating system, Windows XP, Windows 732-bit, and Windows 764-bit, there are corresponding libraries for LabVIEW versions from 8.5 to 2012. There are libraries which correspond to different categories of equipment. For example, spectrometers that are controlled by USB, spectrometers that are controlled through GPIB or RS-232, multi-channel detectors, linear arrays, and the SpecTrack 2, which is used to interface with single channel detectors. I will briefly summarize each category individually and show a few demo programs as well. I am going to begin with spectrometers controlled through USB. This would include the IHR320 and IHR550, as well as the M Series 2 spectrometers. If we look in the containing folder, we see a variety of files. First is the manual in PDF form. This is a great place to start to familiarize yourself with the VIs that are included in the various libraries. Next, we have the filter wheel toolkit. If your spectrometer has an internal filter wheel, it can be controlled using this set of VIs. Next, we have a VI entitled JY Mono Example. This is a compiled VI that serves as a good starting point for developing your own code. It controls the slits, swing mirrors, turret, and wavelength. Finally, we have the Spectrometer Toolkit. This library contains all of the sub-VIs that will be needed to develop any kind of code. If we open this library, we can see a variety of sub-VIs for reading parameters from the spectrometer and setting slit widths, mirror positions, turret position, and wavelength position. These sub-VIs represent the very basic building blocks from which more complex code may be developed. If we now go back to the example VI, we see a user interface where we may choose our spectrometer and initialize. Here I'm going to be emulating since I'm not physically connected to a spectrometer. The spectrometer will then initialize and the grayed out boxes become populated with the current grading position, wavelength, slit widths, and mirror positions. If I want to change any of the settings, I input new values in the white boxes. And then click move to move the motors to the appropriate positions. The gray boxes are now updated with the new current values. Once you are done with the VI, clicking stop will end the execution. The serial spectrometer libraries are organized in a similar manner to the USB spectrometer libraries. The two libraries labeled as COM and UTIL2 are low-level libraries for controlling the serial port or GPIB's communications. The library labeled as user contains all of the sub-VIs required to control the spectrometer. In this case, the spectrometer parameters are set in the global file entitled Spectrometer Setup. Details on the parameter settings for various spectrometers are addressed in the manual for reference. 
the spectrometer may then be initialized by running the startup VI. Finally, the example code may be run. Here we see the same controls that were in the USB spectrometer demo. You may set the wavelength, turret position, mirror position, and slit widths using either the knob or typing in the numerical boxes. Executing the VI will move all of the motors to their corresponding proper positions. If we now look at the libraries package for the multi-channel detectors, we see two libraries, a user library and a global library. The global library contains all of the pertinent sub-VIs that will be needed to create a final experimental code. For example, acquiring an image or a spectrum, initializing the CCD, setting up multiple accumulations, reading the temperature, saving the results, and enabling or disabling the triggers. If we now look in the user library, we see two main VIs for operating the CCD in spectral mode and image mode. If we look at the image mode VI, we see a settings tab where we may select our CCD, set the integration time, the number of desired areas, the ADC rate, and the gain. There's an additional tab for enabling input triggers and setting the trigger parameters. Clicking Setup sends the parameters to the camera, and clicking Acquire begins the acquisition. Spectral mode looks very similar, but in this case, there's an additional tab for setting up multiple accumulations. Finally, the Spectrac 2, which is used to acquire data from single channel detectors, also has a set of libraries. The library labeled COM controls communication through the serial or GPIB port. The library entitled SAQ2 contains all of the sub-VIs needed to interface with a Spectrac 2, including setting the high voltage, initializing, and acquiring data. As was the case with the serial spectrometers, the communication parameters are stored in the setup global file. The demo program entitled Single Channel ACK allows the user to set an integration time and gain, as well as obtain results as raw data or with a scaling factor included. Here is a piece of example code which was written to carry out a transmittance or absorbance measurements. In this case, an IHR 550 imaging spectrometer was interfaced with a Synapse CCD 1024 by 256 open electrode camera to record a spectrum of a 630 nanometer long pass filter. All of the instrument controls are included within two tabs for the spectrometer and CCD. However, I have also included post acquisition data processing. You can set a reference and a dark spectrum and then display your data as raw data, percent transmittance or absorbance. In addition, you can either turn on or off dark correction and save your results. This is just one example of specialized code that can be developed from our base level lab UVIs. Thank you for watching. If you need any help or want additional information, visit our website at www.hariba.com scientific or contact us by phone or email.